Everything you said, we already knew, more or less. Oh, well, here's something that you didn't know. Two of those special atomic bombs haven't gone off. Okay, well, let's uh, DIY some TJI. Now, if you're looking this up because it was called uh, DIY TJI, then uh, you know what they are, but they're just like an I-beam made out of uh, OSB and usually two by material. And so right now I'm doing what is uh, it's, uh, like chamfering the ends of the, uh, or the top and bottom of the the OSB because the channel I cut in the 2x4s was exactly what it needed to be. This helps them slide into place uh, a little bit better. So there's the chamfer. I think you can see that on the, that. So uh, cut all the grooves in the 2 bys. I think there were 88 of them or 82, something like that, um, to make 21 TGIs. TJIs. So this is uh, me gluing them. Um, and there's a, I got to just kind of drill the hole in the glue bottle to get it to squirt out on both sides. It seemed to work out pretty good. Now this one here was probably the worst one I made because I ended up with two thicknesses of OSB. Unbeknownst to me, according to Lowe's, they were just from different suppliers, but one was about the width of a piece of paper thicker and I hadn't chamfered it enough. So this one kept falling apart and driving me freaking bananas. I built this jig, you might see on one of the videos where it's not there, uh, actually helps hold the TJIs upright. See here, I didn't have the jig, I just had them laying on the trailer and then I would put them in there and pound on them and get them in there. The problem with this method was that once I wanted to lay it over and clamp it, the thing tended to just kind of come loose and fall apart in a few places. And then it was very hard to get it back together and clamped. So I made the jig that you see here. And that actually helped, as you can see right now, see I can clamp it as I go along. And then that way, um, it just holds it together a lot, a lot better. And you'll see when I lay it down now, it's clamped. And so that's why I built the jig to where it would hold them up off the ground or off the trailer. I used a 22 foot trailer just because it was a, a surface I could level and it was flat. And then that way I could build on this. Um, I think when I priced these out, they're 22 foot long. Or 24 foot long. Uh, they're anywhere from 150 to 180 dollars a piece, and that wouldn't include freight. I think I ended up paying less than 50 dollars a piece by doing it myself. Not that my time is worth anything, because I like doing projects like this. So it, it turned out actually quite awesome. Some of them, if you look down them, they're not perfectly uh, straight. I had a hard time getting the glue in there until I came up with this system and getting it clamped together. I have a chalk line on there now that runs through there and uh, actually makes it a little better to get, get them straight or flat from top to bottom when they're, when they're setting up right. So uh, all in all, this worked out incredibly awesome and to save almost $120 per each if I added in freight I think I spent less than $900 on all 22 of these and I went through probably 10 bottles of the Gorilla Glue which is a $23 a piece so that gets kind of expensive but uh I like the urethane Gorilla Glue because it expands and kind of foams up in there and gives you a better mechanical bond. And I, and I kind of like that to not fall down on me in 10 years from now. Um, a lot of people say you can't build these things yourself because they're engineered, you know. And it's an engineered eye joist. And so there for some reason it's taboo to build it yourself. Now I wouldn't put these in a second floor structure, even in my own house. 
Well, I might, you know, if I worked out some of the bugs in it. But the, but the reality of it is that, uh, you know, they're pretty freaking sturdy. Um, so I could not find a lot of DIY on videos on this type of joist. You can find trusses and even uh, some 2 by 4 I-beam looking things that are 2 by 4 top, bottom, and down the the ridge or the webbing, I guess. But nothing on these. And I, I think I found one good one that I just had to watch because it was in another language. And I only speak English, barely. And so to find a... a a good DIY video on this was quite hard. I watched a lot of the factory videos, but the factory videos will explain to you how they're made because they're engineered and uh, why you can't do it yourself because the two by fours come in 60 foot lengths or they make them themselves with laminated uh, kind of type lumber, which I thought, you know, if I had to make these again, I would probably use uh, um, one by a material that was dug fur and then I could set set them kind of up in a way to where when I put the uh, you know like I say a one by six on the bottom and the top and then a, and then two one by twos or something down the sides and just glue it all together that would save probably days of running a dado saw and cutting that joint in each one of these things. Um, and I probably wouldn't have to chamfer it either. I could just set it there and then uh, glue it as I went along. A little different gluing technique, but it, it would, I think it would be a lot faster and a lot straighter and maybe even more structurally sound. I don't know. I have a friend that's an engineer. Um, and I could ask him about it, but then he'd just tell me why I, I, I'm stupid. And I, and I don't put a lot of faith in engineers any more than I put a lot of faith in doctors. You know, sure, engineers are great if I'm building a 20-story building. But the, the trusses I tore off my barn, the old ones that were 100 years old, and they were every five feet apart, I literally had to put a chain on it and, and my tractor and rip them down and uh, it damaged a lot of the other side of the barn also, which I had to rebuild. So um, engineering is kind of a thing that you need, but you can kind of watch videos like this and kind of figure it out yourself. So now it's got a, all clamped out and then I go back and forth and tap it and, and crank it until I get it lined up with my uh, chalk lines or pretty close. I mean, it's, it's nothing perfect here. The little clamps uh, that I'm putting on right there are just to hold it down to the uh, to the beams or to the jig, and that way it keeps it flat, straight, plumb, blah blah blah. So there's all the the clamps, and the one that holds the joints together, which I will be using truss plates on that. See, and there's one holding it down to the to the to the jig. That way, when it dries, it doesn't have weird cambers and twists in it, which is really important when you're using uh, glue and and lumber together. The end product will dry exactly the way you put it together. So if you don't have it flat, it'll have a twist in it that will not come out. It'll have a bow in it. Now these little brackets I just stick on there so I can hang the eye joist on it. You know, I take all the clamps off, set it up on these things. And then uh, as long as it's side to side, it's pretty good. So now what I'm going to do, I got it set on those little posts. And those are temporary. I just take them off, put them on. I can uh, just roll it up on top of those three supports. And it doesn't sag in the middle. You can see right there, it's kind of sagging a little bit. It, it does not like being set that way. So that's pretty easy. This process I kind of came up with because um, there's, there's plenty of people that live on my property that I could get to help me, but they're all busy. And uh, I can never count on them to come out and to do 
what I need when I need it. So most of my life, I've, I've learned to work by myself and to come up with ways. I used to lay carpet by myself and move entire housefuls of furniture with dollies and stuff. So if you sit and think about it long enough, you'll get it figured out. And it, it, it may take longer, but over years of, of working by myself, I've saved a lot in labor costs, <laughs> that's for sure. And whining and complaining costs. Yeah, not bad, Mark. Jumping off and on that trailer like you're a young spry boy. What, you're 68, I think, this year? Somewhere in there, yeah. So now these, I already have almost 10 high on one so I just roll it over to the next pile so um, um, it works out just better that way to keep that pile that high now that I've got it there and uh, I don't need any help stacking or you know making sure they're all flat and covering them up you know in case it's going to do something stupid like rain so pretty happy with all this so right here I had it but the my neighbor was running a chainsaw so it is in the background a little bit of noise so I was explaining that what I just said that I like working by myself I don't have people asking me a million questions like what's next what are we gonna do now blah 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 so I took that audio out and just put music backtrack so anyway I hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions um, let me know. I'll put it in the comment section or you can email me at mark at prepper guy and I'll answer it. And uh, I have all the really long videos on building these things if you'd like to see some other stuff on there. So there you have it. You guys take care. I hope this helped uh, somebody that wants to build TGI Joyce's and uh, get her done. The essence of, of hard work is one that's pretty straightforward is that You'll never be the best looking. You'll never be the tallest, most talented, most capable. You'll never have the most money. There will always be someone who's better at whatever you're doing than, what you, than you are. But you can always be the hardest working person in the room.